When it comes to Pac-Man branded products, I have what the kids call zero chill. <laughs> when I see something in a store, I immediately think I need it if it's got Pac-Man on it. And the other day, I was browsing my local Five Below discount store, and in the game aisle, I found this Pac-Man card game from Buffalo Games. Now, labeled just $3.25 didn't matter. I had to buy it. What we're going to try to find out in this video is if it's worth $3.25 and whether or not you have to buy it. That's what we're going to try to find out right after this. This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the Order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming of age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And as I said, buying something that has Pac-Man on it is no big surprise for me. It's not even that Pac-Man is like my favorite game, but it's so emblematic. It's this icon of what I love about the dawn of video gaming that I experienced growing up as a Generation Xer, going to the arcades or frankly, every corner store or grocery stores, everybody had a video game. If they had anything, it's Pac-Man. So that branding, that iconic, you know, the ghosts, the sprites, all those things, they just scream the things that I love about classic nostalgic gaming. So yeah, when I saw this little Pac-Man card game, I had to own it. My first thought was, Maybe this is the same game that Mo reviewed a few years ago. Now that was from a different manufacturer, in fact. I double checked, that one's up to eight players, so totally different game. This, however, from Buffalo Games, says it's the Pac-Man card game, up to four players. So let's get it to the table, open it up, see what's in it, see what the gameplay is like, and see if it is, in fact, worth the $3. Probably, <laughs> we'll see. And here he is, I even opted to just leave the price sticker on it because that's part of my inquiry here, which is typically when I go and shop at Five Below, it's either things that normally cost five bucks or less anyway, well, kind of, they, they sometimes have higher price things. That's not the point, it's cheap stuff. So it's either something that costs five bucks or less or it's something that normally costs more, but they're either bad or cheap or clearance items or discontinued or whatever. So when I saw a Pac-Man game, a card game, I'm like, look, typically a card game like this that's branded and licensed is gonna cost me anywhere from 10 to $15. And three bucks, I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> so I left the price tag on. Look, we can see up here that it's for ages seven and up. It's for two to four players. and takes about 15 minutes to play. And then around back, they tell us that this is a fun twist on the classic arcade game. Oh, well, we'll see. Controller cards, maze cards, pack cards, and bonus cards are included, and for a total of 84 cards and the rules. Okay, well, why don't we get this thing open and see what's inside and find out how to play this game. So getting it all open and sorted out, we have these five types of cards. We have controller cards, maze cards, pack cards, bonus cards, and these little game instruction cards. Kind of a cheat sheet, if you will. There are just four controller cards, and they consist of a red or blue joystick and a play order. We'll player one through player four. The maze cards are exactly as you might expect. These are the Pac-Man maze. And on each card, you have a point value, a location in the maze where this card belongs, and a joystick color that comes into play when trying to claim these cards. This deck of pack cards is by far the biggest, and it's the one, it's the regular cards you have in your hand that you keep. And the majority of them are a Pac-Man with a point value that you can use for claiming and bidding on other cards. And then later in the deck, you have these things called action cards, which could be something like steal a card you've collected from someone or take a card out of their hand, or even something like, you know, draw some extra cards. So these are the ones, the deck that you're gonna deal out that players will have to actually play the game with those other cards. The bonus deck is pretty much what you think it is. It's all the bonus fruits and the things you can get, oranges and melons and uh, cherries and apples and everything. And some of the cards instead are these ghost cards. Now it has a joystick color, it has a ghost card, and it has a power pellet indicator saying you need a power pellet to get that blue ghost. And there's even, I think, there's even a white ghost in there. High point value, but doesn't require a power pellet. And finally, you have these four kind of instruction cards. Nice to have if you don't have the instructions handy or you need a refresher. And on one side, they have the basic order of play, how it goes, and an overview of kind of what the different bonus cards are and what they can do. Now, I've given the instructions an overview, so I know how the game is played. Let me go ahead and get these cards shuffled up, set up the board as it should be to start play, and show you a sample game and what it's like to play this Pac-Man card game. 
With the holidays right around the corner, you're probably already thinking about what kind of cool and different gifts you can get the nerd on your shopping list. Well, please remember the Gen X Grown Up merch store over at genxgrownup.com slash merch. We have t-shirts and stickers and all sorts of products with all sorts of nerdy products on them. And of course, plenty of Pac-Man stuff. It wouldn't be a Gen X Grown Up store without it. And, and every dollar you spend over at our merch store goes to support independent content creation, just like this video. All right, let's get back to playing this Pac-Man card game. I am all set up, and as you can see, what we have is the full kind of semblance of the Pac-Man maze here. Uh, they had the cards laid out, and there's even a little map, as you saw, to show you where the cards go, so you don't worry about getting them mixed up. Each card has a point value, a joystick color, um, and then we have a blank here in the middle. So you start the game by taking one of these bonus cards, throwing it right in the middle, so there's your bonus, and then you're going to deal four of these to each player. I'm not worried about it being totally random because I'm just giving you an example and then we have a full deck. So to begin the game, you're going to look and see what is it you want to pick up. Higher point values, of course. So you look in your hand and you see what you've got. So I have two cards worth four points here. So you're going to try to bid. So essentially you put the hand down here. The other player will also do something similar. They look at their cards and not knowing what the other one might do, they might bid five points, four points. So the guy that has a higher point value on his face up bid gets to select which color joystick he gets and whether he goes first or second. So for example, if I want this six point card, I've got to get a blue joystick or I can't claim it. So maybe this player will do the player one card. And this could be up to four players. I just have a two player example. The second player has this, he picks what he wants. What's he going for? Maybe he wants this four points. So he grabs the player two joystick and he drops it down here. Now, the player who goes first has this bid card out and he can either add to it or just go with what it is, or he can play action cards. I could sneak a card from another player's hand. Let me do that. So I can do that and then randomly take a card from this other guy. Boom, I've stolen. So now I have another card. I can do that again. I can play sneak another card and really screw this guy. You can play as many of those as you want. Oh, sorry, they're face down. I'll grab whatever that is. So I've grabbed this extra credit. So now I can play this and draw two more cards because that's what it says. Now I have tons of cards. So I've played all of these, but I have five points showing. But if I want to get this card, I need to add some points to it. So I'll also play this two. So now I have seven points so I can claim this six point card and put it in my collection of points. And then when you have an empty card, you grab a new bonus and you throw it right down. Ooh, we actually got a turn to blue card. All right, this player has three cards left. All of these cards are no good anymore. We return the one up to the pile and these all go in the discard pile. Now you might think player two is in a bit of a jam here, but he has four points showing and he has four points here and I have a red joystick. So that means I can get anything red up to eight points if I wanted to. So I'm gonna look around and I see, oh, here's a six point red joystick. So I'll play my additional four points and I can claim this six point card for myself and I replace it with a bonus card. Ooh, another ghost. All right. Now that my turn is over, I discard all of these. I discard this joystick. We deal everyone back up to four cards. So he gets one. This guy gets all four of them. And it begins again. So one more round I'll just do. This guy might want to bid. Maybe I'm going to bid a five. It actually starts face down. This other player looks at his hand and he goes, well, let's see. Maybe I'll bid a for argument's sake, we'll say he bids a three. When they're both flipped over, the player with five is the one that gets to select his joystick first. So maybe I want to go first. I want to pick the blue joystick one up. And then the player here changes order every time, can pick whatever he wants. Maybe he wants the two or he wants the three. He can select that and put it down. So now the order changes because I have the one up here. I get to go first. So as a blue joystick, I can look and go, hmm, what do I want? Ooh, sneak a card from a player's hand. Definitely do that. Earns myself an extra card, which I will take randomly. What did I get? Ooh, big money. All right. So I have tons of points here, but you can only claim one card at a time. So maybe, being a blue joystick, I want this, oh, let's see. How about this uh, nine point apple? Sure, so there's five and four. That's nine points. I don't have to play these. I take the apple, add it to my collection of point cards, and then this player that had the three up they will get to go. So three is already showing. You look at your cards and see, I'm like, hmm, what do we have? Aha, here's where I can get a ghost. So I have a card that has a power pellet. In order to get this card, I must not only have eight points, but also have a power pellet in play. So here's five, I'm up to eight. 
eight points, including, whew, bumped my camera, sorry. Eight points, including power pellet, so I can claim this ghost for eight points. He goes into my collection of cards I've earned. We then fill both of these empty spots with new bonus cards, and we continue. The game continues that way until all of the maze pieces are gone. So not all the cards, just all the maze pieces. So if you're ahead and you'd like to end the game quickly, well then what you're gonna do is try to get rid of all the maze pieces. But if you're trying to go for points, maybe you're gonna go for one of these 12 point Galaxian ships or whatever. Now, as you might imagine, in the end, you add up all of the cards, the point cards that you've collected, whoever has the most points wins. And playing this two player is pretty fun, but playing it four players, you can really vie for like who gets which joystick, who bids highest, things like that. It can become pretty cutthroat and there actually is an element of Pac-Man here, especially I like how the power pellets work and how you have to work to get the blue ghosts. So what do you think? Just $3.25? Is that game worth it? It certainly is to me. I don't regret buying it. In fact, I might go back to five below and pick up a couple of more as gifts because there's a perfectly satisfactory game in this little Pac-Man card game. And it's not just a layer of Pac-Man slapped on it. Admittedly, this could be any branding and play this same game. You're bidding, you're going in turns, you're playing cards and actions. You could put any brand on this. But the fact that they used all of the icons in there, all of the bonus fruits and the keys and the, the ghosts and the power pellets you need to capture the ghosts, things like that make it just Pac-Man enough that it doesn't feel like a layer of Pac-Man paint on a generic game, even though it probably kind of maybe is certainly worth it to me. So if, hey, if you find a five below in your area, pop in, see if maybe you can find one of these cool little Pac-Man card games. Hey, I'll throw some links over my shoulders here and here to some other cool Pac-Man stuff that I've collected over the years. Certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video. I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.